All right, Matthew, here we go. We got lesson 5.1.3, the zero product property. All right, so we're going to uh, kind of review a little bit before we get into the zero product property. So how many points do you need to sketch a parabola? Now, remember, a sketch is just kind of a... Um, is just kind of a, an idea of what it looks like. It's not exact. It doesn't have to be exact. Can we sketch a parabola if we only know the y-intercept? Let's see. So I know the y-intercept. Could I sketch it? Probably not because that I could have a parabola over here. I could have one down here. I could have another one over here. That's not enough information to really get an accurate sketch. So, no, I don't know if it faces up or down, where the x-intercepts are. There's a lot of stuff I don't know. I don't know the direction. of the parabola. Direction, I mean, I don't know if it faces up. I don't know if it faces down. I don't know if it even crosses the x-axis. There's just not enough information just by having one point. All right, can we sketch a parabola if we know the two x-intercepts? All right, so let's say we've got a parabola and I know that the x-intercepts are right there. Is that enough information to sketch a semi-accurate parabola? And I would say no, because I could have a U-shape that goes there, but I could also have one that goes here. So it's a little bit more information than we had before, but there's two different directions that we could be going at this point. So I don't know if it faces up or down. All right, what if I had the two x-intercepts and the y-intercept? All right, so what if I had the two x-intercepts? And this one says, try this out. What if the x-intercept was at negative 3? So I'm going to call this negative 3 right there. The uh, other x-intercept is at 5. I'll call this 5. And then I know the y-intercept is negative 15, somewhere down way over here. Okay, I say that I could probably do a fairly good represent, representation of a parabola, especially since I should have another value over there because of the line of symmetry. So, yeah, I think I could do that. I could get a fairly good... Ooh, that was bad. I could get a fairly good parabola by knowing those, those three pieces of information. So yes, that is enough information. Two intercepts and a y-intercept, two x-intercepts and a y-intercept. Yeah, we could definitely graph that. What is true for the coordinates of all x-intercepts? Okay, so anytime we have an x-intercept, what's true is the y-value is zero. What's true about the y-intercepts? So if we have a y-intercept of negative 15, that would be the point 0, negative 15, because the x value is 0. What is the y-intercept of this graph? Well, the y-intercept is when x is 0. So if this is 0 and this is 0, I get negative 12. This is my y-intercept. What equation would you need to solve to find the x-intercepts? And what we would need to do to solve to get the x-intercepts is the x-intercepts are when the y value is equal to 0. So we would need to know we would need to know what 0 equals 2x squared plus 5x minus 12 comes out to. So what is the x value when the y value is 0? So we don't really have uh, we don't really have a way to do that yet to solve equations with x squareds in it. I mean, we could kind of plug in numbers until we kind of found it out, 
uh, but we don't have a process yet for doing that. In Math 1, we didn't really play around with this too much. We did on some problems, but we kind of cheated a little bit. We looked inside. We just kind of used logic to find a figure out. And now we're going to see some mathematical properties that we can use to solve equations like this so that we can find our x-intercepts. Because we can see finding x-intercepts is pretty important because it helps us graph. All right. Zero product property. Here we go. Nathan and Nancy are thinking of two numbers. When you multiply the two numbers, the result is zero. All right, so what are they saying? They're saying if I've got two numbers, A and B, if you multiply these two numbers, they're saying you get zero. What conclusion can we make concerning their numbers? Well, if they're multiplying two numbers and they equal zero, one of those numbers has to be zero. So if I'm multiplying two numbers and I'm getting zero, a is zero or B is zero or both of them are zero. It's possible that both of them could be zero. They didn't say there are two different numbers. All right. We knew one of their numbers because of the zero product property. The zero product property says if you are multiplying and your product is zero, one of your factors is zero. So the, the zero product property states if two values are being multiplied and the product is zero, which is what we have here, two numbers being multiplied, and the product, what we get is zero, then one of the two values has to be zero. All right, so now we're going to use the uh, zero products property, and we're going to start by turning this into a product. This is written as a sum, where we're adding together all the different terms. We want to write them into a product. How do we do that? We do it by factoring. So we're going to factor this. So we're not, we don't have a GCF, so we're going to do, do the area model and the diamond. So we put 2x squared here, we're going to put negative 12 here, and then we're going to start our diamond. These two multiplied, because the diagonals, when you multiply them, are equal. These two give me negative 24x squared. And then I want these two to add up to be 5x. So I ask myself, what well, multiplies to give me negative 24x squared, but adds to give me 5x? And if you ever get to problems like this and you can't think of the two numbers, you can just go through all of your different possibilities. Start with one. Uh, I'm going to call this negative one and positive 24 because this number is positive here. So this means the bigger number is positive. But that, of course, is not it. That's negative 23. Let's try two. Try two, negative two, and positive 12. That gives me positive 10. I'm closer, but that's not my value. Does three go in there? It does. Three and eight. Negative three plus eight, is that five? Yes, I found my combination. Okay, and we could have kept on going, but we didn't need to. Negative four and six, and that's as far as you can go. Those are all the different combinations that multiply to give you 24. So we now know that this is negative three X and positive eight X. So we plug these in over here, negative 3x, positive 8x, and then we finish off the outside. So this has to be 2x, and this has to be x. This has to be negative 3, because negative 3 times x is negative 3x, and this one has to be 4, because 2x times 4 is 8x. And then 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, so now I know I'm doing it right. So we're going to turn it into a product, so we get 0 equals... 
And then this we turn into a product of 2x minus 3. And x plus 4. Here's where the principle of zero products comes in. I've got two things being multiplied. This is multiplied with this. And they equal zero. Therefore, one of those has to be zero. It could be this one. And we would say 2x minus 3 could be 0. Because if it's 0, then this times this would be 0. But there's another option. x plus 4 could be 0. We're going to solve both of them, and we're going to get two answers for this one. So if we solve this, I would add 3 to both sides and get 2x is equal to 3. Divide by 2, and x would be 3 halves. Over here, I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides and get x equals negative 4. So I have two answers. x could be negative 4, and x could be 3 over 2, or 1.5. Now we're going to sketch that graph. So if we sketch our graph, <clears throat> it doesn't have to be a perfect graph, but we're going to sketch it. Uh, sketching the graph. I've got at negative 4, that would be, I don't know, I'm going to call it right here. So there's negative 4. There's one of my x-intercepts, because look what's happening. The y is 0. And remember, when you have an x-intercept, the y value is 0. So we actually just found the x-intercepts here. And then our other one is at 1.5. I'm going to call that right about here. That's positive 1.5. Now we also have another number that we could graph here. Right here, negative 12, that's my y-intercept. Negative 12, I'm going to say it's about down here somewhere. <coughs> and that's enough to sketch. We could even find out where our vertex is. How do we find out the vertex? It's halfway in between these two numbers. So if I took negative 4, plus 1.5, and I took the average, so I divided by 2, this would be negative 2.5 divided by 2, which is negative 1.25. So there's where my axis of symmetry is going to be, and my vertex is going to be at negative 1.25, which will be somewhere down over here-ish. Uh, it wasn't a very good parabola, but we, you know what I, get, what I mean there. All right, so we found all of our information there. Next page, almost done. Okay, another useful point of the parabola is the vertex. Okay, we were just talking about it a second. How can we use the x-intercepts to help us locate the vertex? Okay, let's start by finding the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are when y is 0. So 0 equals x squared plus 4x minus 5. Now we're going to use the principle of zero products. We want two things multiplied equal to zero. So this one doesn't have a leading coefficient. It's a little bit easier. So I have to ask myself what multiplies give me 5 but adds give me 4. This would be 5 and negative 1. Okay, so now I know that this factors into x plus 5 and x minus 1. So using the principle of zero products, I know that x plus 5 might be 0, or x minus 1 could be 0, because I'm multiplying and getting 0. So either this is 0, or that's 0. And we get the values of negative 5 and positive 1. I subtracted 5 from both sides and added 1 to both sides. These are my x-intercepts. Why are they the x-intercepts? Because y was 0. Okay, now we're going to find the vertex. The vertex is halfway in between these two points. Because remember, if you're graphing, and I've got negative 5 over here and positive 1 here, the vertex has to be directly in between those two points, because that's where the axis of symmetry is. So let's go ahead and find the average of those two. Negative 5 plus 1 divided by 2. That's negative 4 divided by 2, and that is negative 2. Now that's my x value. 
okay? So that's only part of my vertex. My vertex is negative two comma something. So how do I find the rest of my vertex? By plugging it into the equation. I find my y value by doing y equals two squared plus four times two minus five. So I'm just plugging in two into these two values right there. So this gives me four plus eight minus five. So that should be 12 minus five is seven. So my vertex is at negative 2, 7. There you go. So I found my x-intercepts. The vertex has to be directly in between those two x-intercepts because it's symmetrical. So I found the average of my two x-intercepts. I got an x value of negative 2. And to find the y value, I plugged 2 into x. Now I can sketch the parabola. All right, that plug. Oh, I was supposed to plug in negative two. Dang it! All right, I screwed up. This is supposed to be negative eight. Four minus eight minus five. So yeah, that changes it quite a bit. Um, so what is that? Negative thirteen plus four. That's negative nine. Sorry, I plugged in the wrong number. I was looking at it, I was like, wait a minute, this is going to face down. So here's another thing that you can do when you're doing these problems is the expectation is since it's positive out front, we've seen in, pre in other um, lessons, that's going to make a U-shape facing up. So here's how I found my error is I was getting ready to graph it. And I was thinking in my head, okay, my here's negative five. So there's one of my intercepts. Here's positive one. There's my other intercept. So I'm thinking, okay, I should have a parabola that looks like this. But I had positive 7 here. So I'm thinking in my head, that's up here. That would face down. That can't be right. This is a positive x squared. It should face up. So that's how I count my error. So that's one thing that you can kind of think through as you're doing these problems. So I'm going to call negative 2 there and then negative 9 I don't know, that's gonna be like right here. So there's the point, negative two comma negative nine. And parabola. Yay. All right, next one, we're gonna sketch this parabola. Okay, so we find our x-intercepts first. Zero equals <coughs> x squared plus x minus six. I'm gonna factor that negative six and one. So what multiplies give me a neg negative six, but adds give me one, that would be three and negative two. So this factors into x plus three and x minus two. All right, so x plus three using the principle of zero products could be zero and x minus two could be zero as well. So solving this, x subtract three is negative three or x is positive two. So those are my two x-intercepts. So the x-intercepts are at negative 3, 0 and 2, 0. Y-intercept is this value right here of negative 6. So that would be 0, negative 6. Vertex, let's find our vertex. Our vertex is found by going the average between these two. So negative three plus two divided by two is negative one over two. So negative one half. So my vertex is at negative one half. And then I have to plug that in to see what I get. So that's 0.5, right? So if I do y equals negative 0.5 squared plus 0.5, what's negative? Dang it, almost did it again. Minus six. So this would be give me 0.5 times 0.5 is uh, minus 2.5. Minus 0.25, geez, 0 0.25, it's positive. What am I thinking today? And then minus 0 0.5. 
minus 6. So let's see, 0.5 minus, so that's going to be these two. When I combine them, I get negative 0 0.25 minus 6. So I get negative 6.25. So there's my vertex, negative 6.25. All right, I got everything I need to go ahead and graph this up. So graphing it out, <clears throat> negative three, zero. There's my first intercept, two, zero. There's my other x-intercept, zero, negative six. There's my y-intercept. The vertex is at one half, 6.25, so it's about like right here-ish, which just means this point right here is reflected, and there is my parabola. All right, how do you find the y-intercept? Plug in zero for x. It's basically the C value. How do you find the X intercept? Plug in zero for Y. So we plug in zero for Y. And then remember we had to factor and then use the principle of zero products then factor and use principle of zero products. Lastly, how do I find the vertex? The X is the average of the x-intercepts. To get the y of the vertex, we plug in the x to the equation. The end. All right, math hard, guys. I will see you later. Bye-bye.